Welcome everyone to the Dr. Janine Show. I'm Dr. Janine Bowery, naturopathic doctor, and today we're talking all about my favorite natural beauty tips. So you as the viewers and my followers, you've all been asking for this for months, so I'm so glad that we can finally put this all together for you in today's show. It's going to be a great one. I've got a lot of demonstrations and <coughs> demos and things that we can do during the show together. I'm going to show you some of the things that I like to do personally to help to keep my youthful glow throughout the year. So today we also have our trivia section coming up, which is always so much fun. And this week, our great sponsors at VitaTree, this is what you're playing for us. So this is the organic vitamin C. And of course, I just want you to participate. You don't have to get the quiz questions correct as long as you're putting in an answer. That is all that we're looking for. Then we have a random selector that will select the winner from everybody who is is, you know, part of the action. So it's it's a great way to have fun and that comes towards the end of the show. If you're new to my channel, welcome in. I hope that you'll subscribe and also turn on your post notifications. So we do this show every Tuesday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. If you do have questions or comments happening throughout the show, please put them in the comment section no matter where you are streaming in from. So hello on TikTok and on Instagram Live, of course on YouTube and on Facebook as well. I look forward to hearing from you all. It's nice to see you. Catherine. Nice to see you. Uh, Loverman33 is here as well. So hello, hello. So if you do have questions, make sure you stay on as well after the show on TikTok and on Instagram live because I'll answer some questions then after we're finished the live stream here on YouTube. And then if you've missed anything, the show always is existing on YouTube so you can refer back to it throughout the whole episode. So hello to Sonia on Facebook. Nice to see you. So I've got my, my team behind the scenes. I've got Instagram in my ear. I've got my TikTok here. So yeah, continue to interact and send me all those likes and things throughout the show. It's so much fun. Okay, so let's let's start with something. I hope you're not squeamish because we're going to start with something that's a little bit, you know, something that you may not have heard about in terms of what's happening, especially on our skin, on our eyelashes, and in our hair, in terms of parasites that can be related to what's going on with our skin on the face. So this is called, and these are mites, and we're gonna show you what they look like, so I hope you're not squeamish, like I said. But it's all, always so much fun, <laughs> you know, that I love my parasites, so, well, not my parasites, but I love to talk about parasites if you've not yet followed me yet. And because it's really easy in, in the sense of being able to get rid of parasites if you know what to do and how to do it naturally. So of course, that's what I'm gonna share today. So this is something called the Demodex mite, and it was discovered back in the 1840s by two scientists and was later described by Gustav Simon, who was a German dermatologist and started to see, you know, the correlation between having skin issues happening and these mites. And now the here's kind of the scary thing is that they are present in 96 to 98% of the population and it's in our skin. So it the problem becomes when it starts to over saturate our skin and that's when we can start to have some of the symptoms which I'll talk about of having these parasites, these mites on the skin. Now they are tiny, so it's not like you can see them with the naked eye, usually just 100 to 300 microns in length, and 25 mites can live in a single, single hair follicle. So now what's interesting is that people who suffer with rosacea often have, you know, these mites, and it's something that can be a causative factor, of course, when they're multiplying and there's more than the normal amount. And one of the sort of disgusting aspects of this mite is that it doesn't have a bum. It doesn't have a butt. So when it's living on your skin, it basically is eating off of the sebum, so the, the fats in the skin, and it basically explodes and now can give off all of these bacteria um, into your complexion. So this is something that we definitely want to address, especially if you're more prone to this, uh, depending on perhaps your diet. So when I get to the tips, this is something that we will discuss. 
Now, of course, the more mites that you have, the more commonly you're going to have more inflammation in the skin, and this is definitely true with rosacea and chronic, you know, blackheads and things as well. So it's something that we definitely want to address because these adult demodex mites, they actually will rot in the sebaceous glands, and this is why it can block up the hair follicles and can lead to acne, but also to those stubborn breakouts because the more oily skin you have, of course, the more likelihood you have of having the mites because that's what they feed off of the oil in your skin. And certain areas of the face are definitely going to have more. So usually the T-zone, so your forehead, your nose, your chin, and even on the scalp where you have more of that oil secretion, this is where you can have more of the demodex mites. Now, this can be exasperated, of course, if you're stressed out, if your immune system is weak, if you've got anxiety. Uh, with There's a certain age group as well, which I'll share in terms of being more prone to this because of the more oily skin. And of course, your hormones. So your hormones can definitely make this worse because then you tend to be more oily. And, and for women at certain times of the month, you may notice that your skin changes and you could be more prone to these mites. And that's why you can have the breakouts. Now, a single female Demodex mite can lay 10 to 12 eggs per pore in your skin. And so if you multiply that number, you can see how we can have 50 to 60 million eggs waiting to hatch all over the body. And that's why we've got to get this under control. And if you're not cleansing, you know, your skin regularly enough, then this can really exasperate the problem. Now, we definitely want to make sure in terms of them hatching, um, that we, in terms of the protocol, we definitely want to, you know, be more prone to cleaning our skin, especially going to bed, because they can actually live on your pillow. Um, so this is where you want to be a little bit more, you know, proactive about getting rid of these things. Hello, Melbourne. Nice to see you. So glad to see you here. Sam Vern, good morning. Nice to see you as well. Island Girl 53D, nice to see you. Thanks for joining. So I hope this is of interest. I promise I'm getting to out of the parasite realm of things and I'm, we'll, I'll be sharing some other great tips that you can do at home. But we started with, you know, the, the mic drop <laughs> with the skin parasite. So hello on Facebook, Arletta and Nora, nice to see you. Great to have you all here today. So, and, and stay tuned. Don't forget we have our trivia section coming up. Okay, so what are some of the symptoms of having these skin parasites, the Demodex? Well, you can feel little tickling sort of sensations, itchiness on the skin, and some people are very sensitive, so they have the sensation of um, things sort of crawling on the skin would be an indication of having the mites. And, and it could be sort of random sort of pinching sensations on the skin as well, and just random itches. So it could be on the hair, it could be on the eyes, the eyelashes. Uh, you could have a little bump underneath the skin and that can be a buildup of the eggs of the Demodex. And so this is something, again, that you definitely want to address. There could be a lot of blackheads on the skin, and that's something else that would be, you know, an indication that you've got these mites. And there could be little sort of pebble-like feelings on the eyelashes, and your eyes or your eyelashes could randomly get itchy. Now, if you do get styes in the eyes, this could be, and especially as a chronic thing, this could be related to the Demodex mites as well. So definitely, you know, being proactive with if you do have or you're experiencing any of these symptoms, then my tips are really going to be helpful for you. Now, you could have a sense that there's something in your eye as well. I don't know if you've experienced this before. It feels like there's an eyelash or something in your eye, but because the mites can actually fall into the eyes, that can be an irritation to the eyes themselves. Now, if your eyelashes start to fall out more more than normal and if you're losing your hair as well this could be because of the mites because remember the mites can get right into that hair follicle and they're eating you know the the wax the oil the sebaceous oil that's in there so this could be you know one reason why people are losing their hair that you may not have realized and you could get you know little like sort of scratchy sensations and it's it's not lice it could be the demodex uh, mites that are in the hair as well 
people that are prone to this, if you have the eyelashes, so you have eyelash extensions done and they're not properly cleaned, you know, then this could be one of the ways to pick up the Demodex mites or to make you more susceptible to having them. And if you wear a lot of makeup, so if your skin isn't allowed to breathe and you wear a lot of heavy makeup and it's not washed off properly and you're not cleansing properly, then this can make you more prone to having the Demodex mites as well. So I know it's pretty, uh, pretty, pretty gross, but at the same time, we want to maintain, you know, something that's called our skin microbiome. So often if you've heard me talk about the gut microbiome, we need to have that healthy balance between the good and the bad organisms. And so we have a microbiome on our skin as well. And if we're, you know, throwing off the balance of that microbiome, maybe you're using a lot of harsh soaps and skincare products. And if your diet isn't stellar in terms of feeding, you know, the healthy protein, probiotics on the skin, if you have a lot of inflammatory foods and maybe you're having a lot of sort of artificial sweeteners and things, which I've talked about in other videos, that can compromise and actually kill off some of your good flora. Maybe you've taken a lot of antibiotics in the past, that's also going to compromise your good flora, your probiotics, and allow some of you know the less favorable organisms to stick around. So a lot of products that we use that we may not be aware could you know affect our microbiome or if there's a lot of emulsion emulsifiers, a lot of fragrances, dyes, silicones, and preservatives in our skincare products, then this is something that can definitely offset that microbiome. So today I'll be sharing some of the things that I use personally, of course, that are totally natural that uh, you don't have to worry about any of, you know, those artificial ingredients. Okay, so now I've got some tips for the Demodex mites for parasites on your skin. So tip number one is to definitely cleanse your skin, especially before you go to bed. And this is the best time to cleanse your skin. This is when I always make sure that I do a good cleansing of my skin before bedtime because they actually breed during the night. So the mites breed at nighttime so you want to do your best to have a nice cleansed skin before going to bed especially if you wear makeup and I'm going to show you my natural makeup remover which is so simple it's one ingredient in just a moment and it's a game changer for removing makeup and of course not upsetting that healthy microbiome on your skin. Now you also want to consider from the inside out doing parasite cleansing and some of my favorite herbs are things that I've shared in other videos, things like oregano, I like black walnut, I like cloves as well and these are really important to help from the inside out to really get rid of these parasites and to help with the Demodex as well. So that's something that we'll share a link below this video so that you can reference uh, how to do that and how to do it naturally. Another thing that I love is tea tree oil. So tea tree oil is known to kill the mites. It's also effective as an antibacterial. So this is, again, any brand is, is okay. You're going to purchase that tea tree oil and be able to use it, usually diluted. And of course, you're not going to use it around your eyes, but you can actually, tip number four is wash your pillowcase with a bit, a few drops of the tea tree oil to kill off any of those mites if they are there. And certainly washing your pillow often, replacing your pillow is important as well. Um, but being, you know, extra sanitary. If, if you think that this may be an issue, then I would recommend even changing your pillowcase more often is going to be helpful for you at least to get this under control until your own immune system can really help to fight these things off. Now another tip is of course for that healthy microbiome on the skin is not to eat too much sugar because sugar will always aggravate and allow those less favorable organisms, parasites to propagate. So you want to watch the sugar in your diet. So if you're just tuning in, welcome in. I am Dr. Jadine. Today I'm sharing my natural beauty tips with you. We are streaming live on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok as well. So hello to Marie Nesbitt on YouTube. Nice to see you. Thanks for tuning in. Okay, so here's a fun one. I promised I would share how to remove makeup and how to do it naturally. So I'm going to put on a bit of makeup just on my hand so you can see sort of my process. And you know that I'm on television. I was there all weekend and, you know, we have to use a lot of makeup for television because of all the bright lights. So we don't look <laughs> like we're unhealthy. <laughs> but here we go. I have so my eyeliner I've got, which is very stubborn. So this is TV, you know, um, grade eyeliner, if there is such a thing uh, that I have. I've got my mascara and I'm going to put on my lipstick here. 
in a happy, fun way here. So, and so in terms of makeup removers, now there's a lot out there and I've tried, you know, the conventional ones. I do have very sensitive skin. So, you know, those blue ones that the, you can see sort of a bit of an oil on top and then you shake it up and you use that. It's not. So the emulsifiers in there are not natural and they can really irritate your skin and then they can make you more prone to having of course the the mites. So that's not something that I recommend. Now this is my sort of secret weapon here. It's coconut oil. So it's plain natural coconut oil which you can see I just put into a little container here. And all you do is you put that coconut oil on. Ideally, you let this sit for a bit. So I'll, I'll sort of put a little bit on um, my eye area underneath my eyes if there's any fallout. Again, after I've cleansed my skin, I'm very gentle with the area underneath my eyes because we know that that skin is very thin and very delicate, so you don't want to be rubbing a lot. So I'll put this on and sort of let it sit for, for a few minutes as I'm brushing my teeth and it sort of is doing that emulsifying job all on its own and then all you have to do is wipe it off so of course i this is a tissue here but um at home what i'll use is a um uh, you know, one of the makeup removing pads to do that. Sometimes a face cloth as well. Depends, you know, what, uh, what kind of day I've had. And if I have everything <laughs> at arm's length, I'll grab whatever I have that's easy to find. Um, and then you can see without, you know, the rubbing and the tugging that that is completely now cleared off. So that's a great tip. I want you to use that if you're not yet using it. If you are using coconut oil to remove your makeup, I want to hear from you. Um, Cheryl, you say, I always learn a lot from you. Thank you, Dr. Janine. You're so welcome. That's why I'm here. And, and like I said, if I if I I'm that person, if I learn something new, natural, great, um, and I use it myself, I all I can do is share it with you. I mean, I want everybody to be as natural and as healthy as possible. So that is one of my my tips for I, I want you to try that because it really is fantastic for removing that makeup and and not just eye makeup. You know, any makeup on the face, just put it on, let it sit for a bit. You know, brush your teeth and then go and clear it off. Off. and it does leave your skin nice and soft after the fact so you're gonna love that okay another tip now have you heard about derma rolling so derma rolling is very popular now and I used to have this done, you know, with my, my beauty expert that I go and visit to have my facials and things done. Um, but I did purchase my own roller and it has tiny little needle project projections on it. And this is the one that is safe to use at home. So you can just purchase these online. But you want to make sure that you are cleansing this. So another thing you can do is to cleanse this before using with a few drops of tea tree. And I just let the drops sort of go on the needle heads and and then I let it run underneath the water um, in the sink just to, to cleanse that. And you can also use hydrogen peroxide is going to kill off some of that, you know, potential bacteria that may be there. And you always want to do that before you use it. But then all you do is on your face, I won't do it on my face because of course I have my makeup on, but now I have my nice, and you're doing this on cleansed skin, um, you're going to roll in three different directions. So you, and ideally some people say don't go back and forth over the same area. I'm not so particular about that. So I sort of go back in one direction on my face and then I'm going to go crosswise. So at 90 degrees and then I'm also going to do a diagonal. And I make sure that I, you know, do all of the areas very careful again and gentle around the eyes. But, you know, you, you're going to do so one direction, two direction and then diagonal. Over your entire face, you can do your neck as well. I often will do my hands as well. Um, and this is a great way now to sort of open up uh, those areas so that what the, the next part is using the natural serum that I have and have mixed up. And I promise that we'll share this recipe, so make sure you're following me on my Instagram page. But this is my own vitamin C serum that doesn't have any synthetic vitamin C. This is one of the most you know, common questions that I get in terms of using vitamin C on your face, you know, what's the most natural way to do it. So this is how I do it. 
um, is actually make my own vitamin serum, which you can see here. And you want to keep it in a dark uh, glass container because vitamin C is, of course, uh, light sensitive. So in a dark container, that's going to help to preserve the efficacy of the vitamin C. Okay, so all you do is you're going to mix five teaspoons of rose water. So all of these I purchased at the health food store. Two teaspoons of glycerin and then five capsules of the organic vitamin C. And that's what, again, not a synthetic vitamin C. This is the organic vitamin C. Open up those capsules, mix it in, and that's it. And so after you've used the derma roller, now all you're going to do is put some of that serum on the skin and the smell of it's beautiful because it smells like, like roses from the rose water. And you're gonna feel it tingle. So that's how you know because the acid from the natural vitamin C is definitely going, you're going to feel that acid on the skin, but the, because you've done the derma rolling now, it will help to penetrate more deeply into the skin. So this is fantastic. Now, if you can alter the recipe a little bit, if you have drier skin, you can add a little bit more glycerin to the recipe, uh, which we'll be posting. And if you have super oily or very sensitive skin, you can add a little bit more, like two teaspoons or so more of the rose water. So that is a great thing to do. And yeah, you just leave it on. So doing this at bedtime is fantastic. It's incredible, you know, for pigmentation, for the brightness of your skin. You will absolutely love it. So make sure, I want to hear how that goes for you as well um, with using your own serum that you mix up, which is great. And this, this will keep for months. You, again, just make sure it is in a dark container. Okay, so thanks for tuning in, everybody. Um, yes, yeah, Sonia asks, is vitamin C serum good for the skin? Absolutely. But again, I prefer to make it on my own instead of purchasing it because that's usually the synthetic vitamin C that's used in the topical serums and you can make it yourself knowing that you're using the whole food vitamin C. I, and, and I've used both um, over the years and I find that definitely the whole food vitamin C and my own mixture is definitely has more efficacy and especially in the tightening if you're looking for the tightening and for the fine lines and wrinkles and pigmentation um, this is you know I love this recipe so make sure yeah you test it out and, and I want to hear from you. Okay, now this is, this is fun. This is probably my most fun part of the show. Uh, we're going to do this together, so don't go anywhere. Uh, we're going to do facial exercises. So there's a ton of YouTube videos. I've done them myself, you know, so you can check them out. There's, most of them are a little bit older videos, so you can kind of <laughs> see my own changes in my own skin over the years. Um, but facial exercises are known, facial yoga is known to be really helpful at tonifying the muscles, which of course are beneath the skin surface. And we have a ton of muscles on the face. But one of the things that I haven't yet talked about is called mewing. So I don't know if you've heard about this, but this is incredible. So what it does, it helps to build the cheek muscles, helps to lift the face, and helps to de define the jawline, which is great. And this was first discovered by John Mew, uh, M-E-W, and he was an orthodontist back in the 1970s, and his son has now taken over. So you can actually see Dr. Mike Mew on, he has YouTube videos where he talks about mewing as a technique. And basically what it is, it's helping for your jawline and to bring the back of your tongue to the roof of your mouth. And this should be the natural position in which our tongue lays. A lot of people don't though. A lot of people, their tongue is actually at the bottom part of their mouth and this can then affect not only your jawline, but it can affect the straightening of your teeth or the not straightening of your teeth, uh, sleep apnea as well. And a lot of snoring can be related to this if your tongue is in the wrong position. Okay, so we're going to try to find that right position. I want everybody to say sing. Okay, I know I look like a nerd doing this, but sing. So sing, when you say sing, it brings the back of your tongue to the roof of your mouth. And so basically when you're actively mewing, so trying to get that position and really tightening that jawline, you bring, and I can't show you because of course my mouth is shut, but you bring the back of your tongue to the roof of your mouth. And then you can do a little bit of a smile. And ideally you're bringing your lower lip over your bottom teeth slightly. And then if you really want to kick it up a notch, you start to smile and actually use your muscles here. I'm trying to look at the screen so I can see myself at the same time. So forgive me, I'm not looking at you. 
and you, you can see my muscles contracting a little bit. So the, it, it does take practice, but it is fantastic for helping to lift that jawline, helping to build your cheek muscles. So for women, if you've ever got you know, fillers in your cheeks, this is a natural way that you don't have to get the fillers uh, and go through that torture <laughs> to be able to help to lift those cheekbone uh, bones and to actually see you know, more of that musculature in those cheekbones. It's incredible. I've been doing this probably uh, at least a year now and I really do notice a difference. And then if I slack off, then I notice that my whole face starts to fall. So it's really something to, you know, at the back of your mind, whenever you're sitting at your desk or you're driving or you're doing, um, you know, you can always be aware of the mewing and bringing that tongue and with a slight, slight pressure to the roof of your mouth. Now, another one of my favorite facial exercises are the eyebrow push-ups. So I want everybody right now to slightly put a bit of pressure on your forehead and with your baby finger right on top of your eyebrows. And then all you're going to do is this motion. But the reason why we're holding down our skin is that we don't want to accentuate, you know, any of the, the lines that we may have on our forehead. So with light pressure down, um, but also pressing on, so pretend that your baby fingers are kind of like a barbell for you and sitting on top of your eyebrows. And you're just going to push up against that barbell to lift the barbell and you do that. So this is incredible, again, for helping to build up the musculature in your forehead. And when you build up the musculature, it helps to sort of puff out the skin a little bit so that your forehead wrinkles are not as noticeable. So you're going to love that. It helps to open the eyes as well. So if your eyes are starting to droop a little bit, doing this one will really help. I hope everybody do is doing this at home right now and you put down your phones and you're doing this <laughs> so that you can experience this. So again, how many reps do you do? You do this, you know, I like 15 to 20 reps or more, uh, two to three times a day if you can, or whenever you think of it. I mean, you don't have to be as regimented as some people are, but you know, whenever you think of it, this is a great way. It's a great wake up as well um, to sort of, if you're feeling tired, you're at your desk, you're working, doing whatever, you're watching, your Netflix, you're watching your YouTube videos, just uh, do this a few times and it really helps to wake you up. Okay, so what's that? The same with, the, oh, how often do you do the mewing? Yeah, so the same thing with mewing, um, it's a bit more intense, so at the beginning take it easy, but yeah, you can do, you know, as many as 5, 10, 15 reps of the mewing with those little it's more difficult so what I try to do when I'm you know conscious of it is just always when I'm driving is to make sure that my my tongue is at the roof of my mouth to do the mewing uh, I'm not necessarily always doing sort of like the cheek um, the cheek lifting with the mewing so yeah but again I would probably start with five to ten of the actual mewing with with the upper uh, cheek area and then you can work your way up as you get stronger it's just like working out any muscle as you get stronger you'll be able to do a lot more so that's a great question thanks for coming in um, with that okay another one that I like for this area so if you're starting to get double chin and you don't like the look of that you can really tonify this area and all you're gonna do is you're gonna look up and then you're gonna chew with your bottom mandible so you look up and I do like, sorry, I didn't say, but I do like sort of a big smile. So I, I accentuate sort of going like this. And then I look up and chew. You probably see, I know it looks really weird, but so that really helps to tonify the neck. And it's a great way for, you know, again, you can do 15, you can do a little bit more of this one, 15 to 20 reps of this one. And you'll really feel that all of these muscles get tonified. You'll notice a difference in as little as a week with doing this one. So you'll love this. Okay, we're going to move on to, I hope everybody's liking this. Raina, nice to see you. Hello, hello. Nicholas, hello. Nice to see you as well. Tiger, um, Tiger Wolds, nice to see you. JC, I know you've got questions, so please stay on. Uh, this is uh, great. Rent, nice to see you as well. Um, hello, hello. 
Okay, go, A flowers. So, uh, yeah, we talked about the skin mites. You missed it. So, yeah, the, the video is on YouTube, so you'll be able to refer back to it. But I did share the tips on what to do, parasite cleansing from the inside out, um, cleansing with tea tree oil. Those are some of the tips to, to deal with the facial uh, skin parasites that may be there. Daniel, thank you. <laughs> Daniel says he likes the heels. So thank you for noticing. <laughs> okay. Um, so now we're going to talk about about the facial massage. So this is something else that I love to do. Um, and when you really start to pay attention to you know, what's going on with maybe where you are getting some creasing, some wrinkles and things, it's really interesting to note that the facial musculature could be very tight. Just like if you always kind of get you know, one area of, of your upper back, your neck, you tend to get sore. Those muscles are tighter than maybe the other side. The same with our facial muscles so this is something that's interesting that you know I was starting to notice on one side I was getting a little bit more you know pronounced lines on one side and so when I was learning about the facial massage I, I thought oh my goodness it totally correlates to where my muscles were tighter on that side of my face for whatever reason so maybe that's just the way that my muscles work when I do speak and make my my facial expressions so this one is great for the forehead line. So you're just gonna use, and ideally this is with a little bit of serum um, or something that's gonna help your, your, your knuckles to sort of glide on your face. So the coconut oil, which we talked about for um, the face is great to be able to do this as well. You may wanna use one of your serums, uh, something that has a little bit of a slip to it. Um, so you're gonna apply that on your face and then you're gonna use your knuckles and basically you're gonna press down and relieve, and ideally, I do this with my eyes closed because it's more relaxing but you press down and you can go as as aggressive as you like <laughs> uh, I like you know if I have a massage I like deep pressure so you can certainly do that you'll relieve more of that tension but that's a great way now to be able to relieve that tension you'll notice that your skin gets quite red because now you're increasing that circulation in that area but you'll be amazed, and if you're doing this, I hope you're doing this at home right now, um, or if you're at the office, maybe, maybe not, you'll, you can feel some of the adhesions that happen underneath this, so much like when you get a massage, and the, um, you know, who the massage therapist is, and you can feel like those really tough spots and those adhesions, you can feel that in the facial muscles as well. And when you, you know, are helping to relieve that, it's, it's amazing what it does to, you, to your skin and, and to the wrinkles. So yeah, try this. And there's different, you know, parts of the face that you can do this with, but this for me on the forehead is, you know, a great way to relieve, especially if you're that person who's always so, you know, curious and has a lot of facial expressions like I do. Um, apparently I've been told over the years by my patients that my face is like the most expressive face. I don't need to say anything, which is a good, but it could be a bad thing too. I did that on the weekend when I was on television at, at TSC and oh, the host said something I don't even remember what it was right now but I like my face was just like so expressive like there was no denying what my opinion was on what was said and it was really bad but it was really good at the same time so I don't I don't need to speak sometimes it just my face will show it so if you're that type of person as well then the caveat to that is that you can get some more you know facial wrinkles and things because your 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 body is so used to giving those facial expressions so don't be as curious especially if you've got the number 11 signs um, usually that's kind of like hmm what do you say like that curiosity kind of look you want to do your best to you know um, not be as curious or not show it in your face as much because that repeated contraction of those muscles uh, is going to give you more of those 11 so just being conscientious about that if you care I mean a lot of people don't care about facial wrinkles and things in the number 11s but if you care then that's you know, a little tip is to you know be expressive maybe with your eyes a little bit more um, and not so much with you know what's going on here with the contraction so that's just a little tip but you can take it for what it is okay so another one now I don't know this is you know very popular is the guasa so this is something that's fantastic you can purchase you know these they come in different stones so this one is a jade uh, guasa and there's a ton of again there's a ton of YouTube and TikTok videos about the guasa 
but it is a great way to help to move the lymph in the face. It helps as a detox. The stone itself has healing properties for the skin. So there's a bunch. I'm not going to show you a lot, but you'll see the shape. So a typical gua sa looks like this, um, and there's a reason for that. So, you know, one of the things you can use it in terms of holding your skin in the midline. So for the forehead wrinkles, this, is, and again, you always want to put um, some type of serum, something that will give more slot to your skin a little bit more slip um, so something natural like the coconut oil is great and you want to hold your midline and you can go out like this uh, but there's whole routines on how to do this in the proper way I'm not going to get into it um, but yeah you can check out the other videos about it now here I like this if you see this little notch um, on the guasa is really fantastic to be able to um, get the jawline so again you're holding sort of the midline of your face and up along the jawline and then a little shake at the top right in front of the ear to help to define the jawline which is great and of course you do it on both sides this helps to move the lymph as well which I'm going to show you some lymph drainage as well in just a second uh, which is great and then also you know going down the neck well not that part you would go down the neck so you use the different you know sides of the guasa to help and then of course the back of the neck as well is an important area and this is helping to drain the lymph so it's all connected to you know the I believe the acupuncture points and how your lymph is draining in your face as well which is important sorry I'm just I've knocked off my my hearing there we go um to be able to hear my producer okay there we go so okay i've got okay phil is asking the bags under the eyes of these facial exercises help with that yes phil <laughs> great question so especially the lymph drainage which i'm going to show you now is great uh doing the massage doing the exercises doing the guasa can really help to drain um you know if you get the puffiness under the under the eyes which is fantastic so absolutely and and whenever you're doing you know the facial exercises that and the mewing can help with this as well it just helps to get the blood flowing and draining the lymph so the lymph we know drains into the main chain which is in our midsection so whenever we do anything to lymph drain the lymph we're we are always wanting to make that direction go down towards the main chain which is in the midsection of our body so the way to do this, I hope everybody joins me on this one, is you're going to start, I'm going to try not to hit my microphone, you're going to start, so your clavicle, so your um, collarbone uh, is here. So with your opposite hand to the opposite side of your body, you, you basically use your fingers above and below your collarbone like this, if you can sort of see, I'll... I'll exaggerate it so you can see I'm above and below my collarbone so you're gonna go from one side to the other and I do this you know five to ten times sometimes I even do this in the shower depending on you know where I'm at if I've done it yet during the day I try I do this at my desk I, I do this um, you know whenever you think about it but yeah if you want to be more regimented do it in the shower every day do it which is great um, there is a breast component as well for women which and for guys as well but uh, I, I think more so for women uh, in terms of you know draining the breasts as well so I start here above and below the clavicle and then now very lightly so it's a very light touch so I should say that I was exaggerating it for you so you could see my like I'm really rubbing you can see that it's turning a bit red you don't do that it's a very light touch above and below your clavicle to get that going then very lightly because if you press too hard you're actually going to shut down the lymph flow that's not what you want the goal here is to allow everything to flow so very lightly is like just like light light touch on the front of the neck Okay, then you come behind the ears and in front of the ears. So you can see how my fingers are sort of behind and in front of the ears. And you're just going to go down gently. And you can go down the chin as well like this. But I like sort of down, always down towards that main lymphatic chain. And then the back of the neck down, down, down very gently. And then the breast component of this and, and to drain the armpits. So if you have a lot of sort of congestion in the upper arms, this can be a lot of times related to lymph. So just very gently down. And you can do a bit of a tap. Some people do a bit of a tapping motion as well, but just gently down 
the arms on both sides like this and always towards the midline and then you start again so you, again you'll do this um, you know five to ten times five to ten times behind here five to ten times back of neck five to ten times and then again the breast area as well so it's fantastic so if you tend to be puffy if you've got a cold or a flu sore throat this is a great way uh, to be able to get things draining and you'll actually feel when you first start doing this it's incredible usually by about the third fourth time that I get just from starting on the clavicles I have to swallow that's already the lymph is starting to drain so I don't know if you experienced that if you tried that right now but it's great um, okay some other tips really quickly I know we've got to get to our quiz section is something that's not talked about in my opinion enough is blue light toxicity so you want to maintain the be beauty of your skin we always hear about the sun and that's a big misconception that the sun is very damaging to your skin. Yes, at certain times of the day, too much sunlight exposure is going to photo aid your skin but under the wrong conditions. So meaning that you don't you know, have healthy mitochondria. So you can have safe sun exposure. I have a whole show all about this, you know, and doing it in the right way actually helps your skin. But it's the blue light toxicity from all of our devices. So our cell phones, uh, the artificial lights, the LED lights um, are all in our you know our tablets our computer screens are all very much higher in the blue spectrum of the light and that's very damaging to our skin so some of the tips here is you want to balance out that blue light if you are always behind a window open the window by opening the window you're allowing all that full spectrum of light from outside from the sun to come in and that's very balancing for your skin and this is a game changer in terms of you know what your skin will look like in terms of that aging process definitely do your best to work outside as often as possible and, and eat your meals outside as well so whenever you can get outside even if it's cold uh, you want to get outside and make sure that you're getting you know that balance balance of the spectrum of the natural light from the sun. Another aspect for the aging skin that you want to decrease as much as possible is your EMF exposure. So I've got other videos uh, to make sure that you check out on how to decrease your EMF exposure. Put your devices on airplane mode. Um, one of the other things you can do as a supplement is make sure you're taking enough magnesium. I actually personally have doubled up my magnesium intake to help to counteract those negative effects of the EMFs. And also make sure you're taking your fish oil. So DHA is, you know, my favorite supplement supplement go to in terms of getting that high concentration of you know those omega-3s for your skin which is fantastic okay so I think we're gonna leave this maybe for next week yeah I think we're let's go to the quiz section because we're running it short on time and we will continue the beauty discussion next week I promise there's a few things I wanted to get to and we didn't quite get to them so we'll do that next week okay so here we go Thank you very much. It is quiz time, everybody. I hope everybody's ready for this. Um, you've been very patient. And here we go. Are we ready? So everybody, just do your best. Don't get all scared and nervous. I know in school, everybody's like, quiz time? No. Oh my gosh, I'm scared. No, just put in your answers. Try your best. It's so much fun. Uh, Jay Heatwave, we're talking natural beauty today. Uh, JC, nice to see you. Um, Scorpio, 191198, good to see you. Uh, Wonder Woman 106, you've got questions. Stay on after the fact. I see some questions about some procedures as well. Okay, we'll talk about that after the quiz section. Uh, make sure you're staying on TikTok and I'll answer some of those questions. There's some good ones I see that are coming in. Okay. Just do your best, everybody. Just put some kind of answer in, even if you don't know uh, what the answer is. Okay, are we ready? Quiz question number one. Commercially processed agave syrup is high in what sugar? This is something that we talked about last week. Commercially processed agave syrup is high in what sugar? Um, I started off with a... Uh, Nora, you saw me on TSC. You see, yeah, you, that's funny. TikTok has it already. Oh my goodness. User 9417. Awesome. Uh, JC, good, good. Melbird, Melbird, you were faster than everybody else. Um, three Enchanted, Three Impress was actually the fastest on this one. Good job, everyone. Wow. Anybody else? Um, Anybody else? 
Agave syrup is high in what sugar? Which I talked about um, my opinion on this last week. Nadia on Instagram has it. Good job, Nadia. Um, Brent, you don't remember this one? That's okay. Steve. Hi, Steve. Good job. Uh, Denise, good job. Um, anybody else? Okay, the answer is fructose. So eating too much fructose can be really, you know, destructive for your liver, can cause fatty liver. Um, that's why too much fruit, especially in the wrong season, can be not the best thing for your body. So, and that's why when they process the agave, it's something that we talked about last week in the show, then, you know, it really does spike the, that fructose. So it's not, not the best sugar alternative, in my opinion. Okay, question number two, true or false? This one's, it's funny. We've done this before, but I wanted to do it again. True or false? A banana a day keeps the doctor away in Canada in the winter. True or false? <laughs> Scorpio, that was great for the last answer. Uh, Steve was quick. Yes, of course. Good, Steve. I'm glad you picked that one up fast. <laughs> Anybody else? Um, Nora and Arletta, you were right with the previous uh, uh, question on Facebook. Good job. Uh, and Marie was right as well. Good job. Diva Organa organic and Virginia on Instagram. Good job, everyone. Nadia has it as well on Instagram. Good job. Christina Dorsey, nice to see you. Good job. Um, Jassy Ledge, good try. JC40, good try. Three Enchanted Impress, um, no, but good try. Thanks, thanks for trying. Uh, Sandra Con Condos, I will answer that after we're done the quiz section, so st stick around. Uh, I'll stay on TikTok with, to answer your questions. Uh, anybody else? Sonia, good job. Uh, good try. Arletta, good job. Okay, so the answer is false for this one. So it's something that I've talked about. A banana a day keeps the doctor away. Not good if you're living in the cold Canadian winter. It's uh, not in sync with what's going on with the season and very difficult to utilize the energy from that banana and it will spike your insulin too much as well. So it's not something that I recommend. Okay, question number three, what is the best eat? What is, this is something again that I've spoken about a few times. What is the best type of butter to eat? Um, that's right, Wonder Woman, it was false, good. Ah, Christina, good job. Christina Dorsey, JC Real, I like that answer as well. Brent, good, good, good. Melbourne, good job. Um, Denise, good. Wonder Woman, good. Monica Atkinson Portraits, good job. Uh, Jassy Judge, Steve Backup, good job, good job, everyone. Orletta, good job. Um, Nadia, as well on Instagram, good job. Uh, Diva Organic has it as well, good job, everyone. Everybody is very quick today. Are my questions too easy? I don't know. I thought they weren't the easiest. Uh, Brent, good job. Virginia, good job. Um, Christina Dorsey, the lives is usually every Tuesday for my show and then usually in the mornings throughout the week and Thursdays will be prime time uh, evening, so 8.30 p.m., 9 p.m.-ish <laughs> before I put my kids to bed. <laughs> Filmar67 on Instagram has it right as well. Okay, so I was looking here for the best type of butter is grass-fed organic as much, I know it's I know it's expensive, but do your best. You don't have to eat as much as what you're used to. Um, for cooking, I like grass-fed ghee, but going into the colder winter months, this is definitely the type of fat to be eating if you are in a cold climate, okay? Um, it's very important. Okay, it, what, there's jokes happening? I <laughs> Malbert is commenting? Oh, it's not easy, you just pay attention. Oh. Oh, that's a good one. Good job, Albert. Okay, question number four. Coconut oil can be high in what element? So, no, coconut water. Did I say, oh shoot, it should be water. I'm sorry, guys. Coconut water can be high in what element, which can damage your mitochondria? 
it shouldn't be oil on the question. Coconut water can be high in what element that can damage your mitochondria? Coconut water. What's the problem with coconut water? I discussed this last week. TikTok has it? Uh, I don't see it yet on TikTok. No, that's not right. Okay, I see. Yes, it's a, it's a typo. Steve, good job. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> I'll give it to you. <laughs> um, okay, anybody else? Anybody else? Um, yes, Arletta, good job on Facebook and correct spelling. Wow. Very good, very good. Nadia has it on Instagram as well. Good job. Um, Denise, yeah, question mark. That's okay. Yeah, JC, this is a tough one. Yeah, you had to sort of watch my show. I believe it was last week. Yeah. Uh, coconut water can be high in what element which can damage your mitochondria? Some people said... Yeah, some, yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, okay, so it, it is, so some people are saying, Rene, you don't know? I like that emoji. That's good. Um, Brent is thinking, I love these emojis. It's so fun. Uh, okay, I, should I say? Nora, yeah, good try. Good try. I was looking for Arletta had it. Um, Steve had it. Nadia had it as well. Deuterium. So that's heavy heavy water, heavy hydrogen, which messes up your nanomotors in your mitochondria. So if you missed that, those episodes about mitochondrial health and light water versus deuterium de and deuterium depleted water, please check out that episode. There's a ton of Im very important information for your overall energy and for, you know, not getting serious diseases like cancer and things. Uh, all of that info is in the deuterium depleted water um, and deuterium show. So if you missed that and and my interview with Victor Segalovsky, please check that out. It's a lot of very, very important information. Okay, deuterium, D-E-U-T-E-R-I-U-M, D-E-U, deuterium, there we go. We can see it on the screen now. If you are watching on, on YouTube, you can see this. the spelling is on the screen. That's in coconut water, so not, not the best thing. Uh, when, once I learned about this, I stopped drinking commercial coconut water. If you're at, on the islands and you get it from the tree and it's a green coconut, that's different. It, that would be okay. Okay, question number five. Gluten-free treats can be high in what? Gluten-free treats can be high in what? Um, oh, Christina Dorsey, your hus husband drinks it daily? I don't know if I would like that. Yeah, Christina, good job. Um, absolutely. I like that answer. Good, good, good. Uh, Marie, yep. Good, good try for the, the, the coconut water. I think that was your answer there. Uh, Wonder Woman, good job. Raina, good job. Bright Ideas, 369, good job. Monica Atkinson Portraits, good job. Yep. Virginia, Virginia has it on Instagram, good job. Uh, Steve, good job. Yes, Christina, exactly. Um, who did I miss? JC, yeah, I like that answer as well. Melbert as well. Uh, Christina had it. Nadia has it on Instagram as well. Good job. Yes, yeah, so what I was looking for was sugar. Salt is a good answer as well. Some of the bad fats, so the polyunsaturated fatty acids, the PUFAs, like the corn oil, the vegetable oil, canola oil, not good. Um, and of course grain. So as much as, you know, it's gluten-free, it's still usually a grain like rice or, you know, some of the gluten-free flours, which for some people is not the best thing for their health in terms of being to, you know, having good digestion and good mitochondrial health. So it is controversial, but something that I talked about last week. Okay, so that was fun. So thanks to, for everybody who participated today. We talked about all my natural, not all of them. We have more coming, I think, next week. We will add to the show the things that I wasn't able to get to today, um, but those were some of my favorite natural beauty tips. So I hope that you learned something new. I'd love to hear from you. Please do put it in the comment section below. Be sure to share this video, please, as well with your friends. That's always fantastic when you do that. I appreciate all of your support and 
a thumbs up and all those presents and things that you can send me on on TikTok, which is always great. If you're new to my channel, welcome in. I hope that you'll subscribe and click the bell so you can always be notified of my newest and latest options. And it's always my goal, you know, to inspire you over your health and how to do things naturally. And I hope that you do that. I hope that you use these tips today so that you can live a healthier life and do it, of course, all naturally. Thanks for watching today.